Welcome to Gadget Flow Podcast. After working with more than 6,000 customers since 2012, we've learned a lot about marketing, product placement, crowdfunding, and everything in between. In this podcast series, we'll have as guests crowdfunding project creators, C level executives from the top marketing firms of North America and Europe, consultants, and industry experts. Make sure to subscribe in iTunes and check out our website at thegadgetflow.com. Kickstarter is an art, and don't let anyone tell you differently. What's up, people? Jessica Naziri here with the Gadget Flow podcast, talking everything crowdfunding. Thanks for tuning in. Execution is everything when it comes to a successful crowdfunding campaign. On this podcast, we discuss the secrets for achieving your goal, plus doubling it, and what's within every campaign that's successful. Today, we have Hamza Amslan from Quick Snap. We'll pick his brain to find out some of his marketing techniques he's been using for his Kickstarter campaign. Hamza, great to have you on the podcast. Welcome. Thank you so much. Yes. So, Hamza, we're so excited to have you here today. Your product is the Quick Snap. So, if you can just kindly introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about your product. So, basically, our the product it's uh, customized um, sunshades for cars, and um, so they're an alternative to tents. Like you can just snap and off, snap them on, and snap them off instantly. Um, it, they're actually, you know, they're just gonna they're just gonna look. Um, the same shape like your car so basically you don't need to you know you don't need to get those sun shades that look like really ugly or you know so it look, makes your car look beautiful and you don't need any adhesive or magnets or clips or anything so that's kind of the the mechanism there i see and so this is for inside the car or outside the car uh inside inside and and this would fit ultimately in any car they're all the same window shape and size uh, yeah, so basically we have to customize it for each for each each specific model. Like for example, you have a Camry 2017, and then if they change the shape again in 2018 that they're doing, then we have to come up with a new one for the 2018. Nice. So you're definitely on top of the newest car trends, right? Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. We have to. Yeah, yeah, and you know, you and I, we both live in sunny California. It's a warm day today. Is this really to block out the sun, or what's the ultimate goal with this? So, I mean, I've lived in LA for for ten years, and um, I'm, I'm sure you know we have to sit in traffic for long periods of time. And oh yeah, I think on average we're getting over three hundred sunny days just like today. Yes. Oh yeah. So, um, I I used to get tints on my car like all the time, and. Every time it would be, I would, I mean, for the front ones, I'll get a ticket, then I have to have to get it written off, and then oh, I have man. to get them taken off, and uh, it was just it was just a hassle. So right now with these, I could just, you know, they're on demand. So at night I could just take them off, and I don't need them, you know. And then during the daytime, I'll just take a few seconds. I'll pull them. I'll just put them back on, and then I could just store them like anywhere. I could just put them in my trunk or on the back seat or wherever. Nice. Okay, great. Yeah, I also have been through that too, where I had to wear the tints and or I had the tints and I would get so many tickets. So that's a great idea. Now, tell me, how did you get involved in the crowdfunding market? So basically, uh, the idea was to get a validation for my product because I, I, I knew that there's a market for the for the product. But then, when you go to places like Kickstarter or crowdfunding in general, those people uh, who are actually over there, who are the backers, you know, they're they're very smart buyers. They're not like your usual buyers, you know. They're very smart. And then if if they're actually validating your product and if they respond well to a product, I think it just goes on to show that there is a market for that product. And I actually wanted to get that validation going on for, for my product. Nice. Okay. So that that's a that's really a great way you got into it. Now you've heard of crowdfunding, obviously. You've launched a campaign and you're still working on it. So far, is it going as expected? What's the goal and where are you right now? Um, I mean it was it was my first campaign. It was like an overwhelming experience. It was just amazing. It was incredible because I got I got to learn so much that I that I didn't I didn't like I had no idea about crowdfunding, let's say five six months before you know from 
five, six months, maybe like six months before today, I didn't know anything about crowdfunding. And then it has been like a rocky road, but I, I, I just learned so much. Um, I was, it was a lot to absorb. And um, I think it was, it, it, it was, it's just going, it's going very well. Like after the campaign ended, it's obviously a lot of work. Um, I didn't expect to get so many backers in the first place, but now that we got them, we have to get, we have to make the product basically customize it for, for each car because we have to like, it's, it's not like you get hundred backers and you just give out hundred products, you know? It's like you have 100 backers, now you have to ask them what cars they have, and then you have to go out there, try to get, try to customize the product for every single car. So that's what we're working on right now. Nice. Okay. And, and so you said that you, you still are in the middle of funding, correct? You're on Kickstarter? Oh, no, actually, uh, we actually ended the campaign, uh, but we're actually going to be launching a 2.0 um, around summertime. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. So that's so basically right now we're. We're delivering the 1.0 and we're pre-launch. We're working on the video and everything for the 2.0. Um, so basically, this was more like a test. I wanted to test the market and see how how Kickstarter responds. And I think the response was good, which encourages me to launch another version uh, on Kickstarter. Oh, great. So clearly, you had strategies into place that you're going on for a second time. Can you share what were some of those strategies that worked for you with Quick Snap, and maybe some that didn't work so well? Um, I would say that if you want to launch, just don't launch during the holiday season, especially if you have a seasonal product like mine. Um, I mean, I, I still did it, and I don't regret it because I actually wanted to do it, and I wanted to. Uh, I mean, it was challenging for me to launch it during the holiday season and during the winter time. Uh, my product is obviously seasonal. It's more summer-based product, but I still wanted to see, you know, uh, what type of response I can get during the toughest time, and it was more of a challenge for me. But then, when you launch during these times, you know, the marketing it's it's challenging because the marketing costs are really high. Um, Facebook advertisement is a big part uh, of Kickstarter, and that's really expensive during those times. So I would say. Try to stay away from the holiday season if you can. Um, and um, also, like, after the holiday season, you know, you get a lot of returns. <laughs> like, I, I had so many canceled pledges after, like, New Year's. Oh, so, okay. So, yeah, that was that. Was that. But, you know, uh, strategy-wise, I think um, cross-promotions, they work, they work very well because those are people who are actually looking for cool products. Give me an example and, of a cross promotion. Does that mean an influencer? Does that mean someone else that's also doing a crowdfunding um, campaign? Yeah. So yeah. So basically, you know, you'll just go out there and um, talk to another creator who is who has a, a campaign going on, and you know, essentially, you just tell them, hey, you know what? Um, I think um, I, we could promote each other's product on on our next uh, next update. Like, you know how you post updates on Kickstarter, so at the end of the update, you can be like, hey, you know what, uh, check out this cool product, uh, which is running on, on Kickstarter, and maybe you you like it. So, you know, so if I have 500 backers, the update goes out to them, they're going to look at that product, and if they like it, they're going to back that product, too. Nice. Okay, that's a, that's a really good method. And so that was another strategy. Any other strategies that worked well? Um, I mean, I, I had my product on, on gadget flow. That was, that worked really well, like really well for me. Okay, great. Um, Tell us about uh, that. And for the people, you know, who are just tuning in on this podcast, you're saying gadget flow uh, worked out for you. So basically when I started, um, posting on gadget flow, um, you know, I just took like a standard package and it, it didn't work for me, but then I had done a lot of research on it and I, I was just surprised that it's not working. So I just... I just had to dig in more and I figured out that I have to, I need a, um, a better package because what happens with the standard package is that people are not, not being sent to your campaign directly. They're being sent to gadget flow and then it just adds an extra step for them. So I upgraded to the, to the premium package, I believe. And, um, it actually started working because then 
now people are get going directly from to my to my my campaign page to the Kickstarter instead of going to Gadget Flow and then from there you have to t- so basically kind of uh, omitted that step of uh, of taking them to the Gadget Flow and then taking them to my campaign. So then it started working well and another thing that I wanna I would want to share is that with uh, with websites like Gadget Flow. It's more like a long-term thing because when you post over there, your product is going to be there forever. So it actually helps you with like SEO rankings and, and Google. So I think it, it, it just helps you with the branding. Okay, great. Yeah, that's good to know. I'm glad that it worked out for you. Now, would you be able to maybe tell us what percentage you got an increase in traffic? Um, I, uh, I'm i not sure, but I think, I think it was more than... I don't know, it was more than 10 or 15% off my revenue that came from there. Wow, that's fantastic. Okay, that's something that we like to hear that. That's a success story right there. And so yeah. with that 2.0, was this another strategy you'll implement again? Or are you going to continue you know, trying to cross-promote, like you said, more seasonal, being wary of uh, that and holidays. With the two point oh, with the two point oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna be running I'm gonna be running ads like Facebook ads, uh-huh. and because uh, now because now I have um, I have an audience from my first campaign, and uh, I could actually, you know, I could actually uh, create similar audiences, uh, people with similar interests, and then I could just target them. Right. Like on Facebook. And, and you know, you bring Instagram. up something really interesting. Now that you know your market market and target audience, now you're duplicating that. And for people, often they find that, or I, I find that they don't know that that's the first step, right? You need to have that target audience there. And that's great that you're duplicating that, knowing who's going to come back for it a second time around. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people would just take a take a take take on a campaign or a product and then it won't work out and they'll just blame the marketing. And I would say, um, you know, it's instead of blaming the marketing, try to see, you know, what it, is there something wrong you're doing? Is it the price point? Or is it something else? Is there something better out there? Or, you know, so you basically you try to find answers within yourself instead of just saying, because with marketing, essentially, it's just it, what it can do it. You know, what marketing can do is it can bring your product in front of the people. It cannot just, uh, you know, force the people to buy it. If they don't like it, they're not going to buy it. Or if there's something wrong, they're not going to they're not going to buy it. Right, right. So now, you know, you said you're, you are launching again on Kickstarter. Do you think it makes sense to leverage the Kickstarter community and then launch your own e-commerce shop after that? Um, I think it's it's just that when you go to Kickstarter, um, you kind of build some credibility over there. So now people, and especially after you deliver the product to your backers, so then it's more credit, you know, it's just, it just makes more sense to have your own e-commerce store after because now people know that, Hey, these guys are for real and they've actually delivered. And, um, you know, so they're more comfortable going to your website and ordering, uh, the product directly from you. Right. Okay. And I like to ask this of everyone Indiegogo or Kickstarter and why clearly you did went with Kickstarter, but I want to know why. Um, uh, I mean, they just, they just have, different models you know indiegogo it's more it's more like a marketplace uh, right now because they've added more things you know they've added more features to their website and they're more inclined towards building um a long-term um like an e-commerce platform as you said with kickstarter it's it works better because there's like this urgency to back because you know okay this i have 30 days and i have to back this product um, and after that, it's just going to run out and, um, you know, I'll, I won't be able to be a part of this, of bringing this product to life. So that's why Kickstarter just works better because, first of all, they have uh, they have a better vetting process for creators, you know, where they're just not going to approve every campaign. You know, first they review the product and they review everything. So I just I just believe people are more comfortable backing on Kickstarter. Awesome, that's good to know. Now again, tips for first time crowdfunders. Obviously, you're going into your second one, not your first rodeo. Any tips for the first timers? Um, it's I I would say just 
do a lot of research, um, you know, on your product actually, and you got to know your market, you know, it's, it's just not, it's not, it's not as simple as it looks. It's not like you have, you know, you can't just make a product and then just launch it and think, okay, it'll be a home run. It, it doesn't work that way. You have to put in a lot of time, a lot of effort and a lot of research into the market and try to try to test the product beforehand, you know, try to uh, try to do like a pre-launch where you ask people, you know, what they think of your product. That'll just help you out. So get the feedback from friends and family. Uh, friends and family uh, and, you know, try to do like a, like a like a giveaway or try to do like a survey. There's a lot of places where you could just do like free service. And I think um, they might, you know, they might help you with deciding on the price point or if you want to make any changes or because, you know, even if a single thing goes wrong, once you launch the campaign, you know, you don't have the, the clock is ticking. You don't have that much time, you know. So most of the preparation, you have to do it before the campaign. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Now, let's switch gears a little bit. I want to know what inspires you as an entrepreneur, Hamza. What were you doing before this? Uh, I've been I've been an entrepreneur for like the last eight years. Um, I I've just um, I just I just love to love to do something on my own. I just love to create something or do something which I could say this is something I created. Um, I've done a lot of different um, different stuff, um, and. Uh, it's it's just that feeling, you know, that every day I want to I want to wake up and I feel excited and I'm looking forward to something and I I think if I'm just working like a regular job I, I won't be that excited every day. I would, oh, I would yeah. want to get out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> You're speaking to the right audience here. Yeah, I mean, I would uh, honestly I wouldn't I wouldn't give this up for for anything and I know a lot of people would actually come up to me and they'll be like um they'll just say that hey I want to do this too. And, you know, they, they're just working a regular job and they're making good money, you know, no disrespect to them. But I, I, I just say that it's not for everybody, you know, cause you have to give up a lot, a lot of stuff. You know, you have to give up a lot of stuff because maybe it looks like we're not working or we're making our own hours or we're flexible schedules. It's actually, you know, it's actually the opposite. We're actually working all the time. Oh yeah. It's never turned off. I joke about yeah. that all the time. Uh, you, I work 24-7 hours a day. I just get to decide what time I wear my pajamas. Exactly. Right? You know, it's, it, yeah, and it's not that simple. You know, every, every, I, I, I just feel everybody cannot give give this up, you know. Like, I know I gave up. Um, I have a mechanical engineering background, and I gave up. I gave that up. Oh, wow. To be an entrepreneur, you know. So, uh, you know, if, if, if you want to be an entrepreneur, you actually have to give up. Uh, you have to get out of your comfort zone. You can't expect to be making six figures just in your first year. It's not going to happen. But yeah, eventually it's going to pay off. So, you know, it's just if you have, you know, if you have what it takes, if you actually can stand up and tell your parents or tell your wife or your family or your girlfriend that, hey, you know what, this is what, what I want to do. I know it might not be so pretty right now. It might not make me a lot of money the first year or the second year, but eventually, yeah, you know, it'll, it'll pay off. But let's wait till the third year and then let's talk. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you know, with, with Amazon, uh, you know, if you look at Jeff Bezos, you know, he was working for a fortune 500 company. He was making 500,000 a year and he was, and he quit and everybody told him, his wife told him he's crazy. You know, why would he give up a $500,000 job? And you know, he's making what? Twenty, thirty thousand dollars a month. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And you know, you can't yeah, you can't start making thirty, you know, five hundred thousand in your first year, but look where he's at today. Right. So is that what inspires you? The flexibility, the vision and and the creativity? Is that what's inspiring you? Yeah, and then I'm I actually feel like I'm I, I like to take risks. You know, I like I'm inspired by people like Elon Musk who are living out of and uh, their office and you know they're investing all their savings in you know and they're not they're not even keeping any money for for rent they're just investing they're just going all in that's what i like to do right right that's great now tell me what does it take to be successful like you said like i guess not elon musk because he's not successful yet he's not making so much money on the uh the cars maybe the solar powers but 
the the roofs, but you know, like you said, Jeff Bezos, he's successful. In your mind, what makes a business successful and based on your experience? Um, I think first of all, you you have you need to have a problem that you're solving. You know, so you need to identify a problem, and then you have to come up with a solution, right? And then once you do that, then it's gonna you know that okay. Now it's going to go somewhere. You can't just come out with anything and say, okay, you know what? Just because you like something, it's going to work. It's not, it's just not going to work that way. You know, sometimes a lot of, I've seen a lot of people who, who make a product and they're so attached to it emotionally and everything. And, you know, people, yeah, they can clearly see that, you know, their product, it's, it's not a home run, but they're just so emotionally connected to it. They would just don't want to give up. So I would say, Never be afraid to, to quit. You know, if you're seeing that some something is not working, just go on to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And I'm sure eventually you'll get there. You'll get you'll get something that'll work. So I'm saying don't be afraid to let go. You know, don't if something afraid. is not working, just let go. And that's a character trait. Not everyone can do that. So that's that's an interesting point. And final question if you could just change one thing from your career, what would that be? Um, I, I'm I, I'm gonna say nothing. <laughs> I nothing. Mean, it, yeah, because the journey is more important than the than the destination. Because it's all about it's it's all about um, you know how you get there. It's not about where you're getting to. Because the only thing we can control is the path, or it's you know the path that we take. We cannot control the destination, right? Maybe we're going to get there. Maybe we're not going to get there. And even if we're there, maybe it's not the destination. You know, you always have to, you, you know, you're, you're always, you know, no matter, you know, even if you're a billionaire, you're still, you're not going to stop, right? You're still, you're still want to, you know, you're still going to want to be going, you know, you, you're not going to stop. So basically it's all about the path. So you just have to take a path and just keep going. Never stop, you know, mm. and I, I wouldn't change a thing about anything. Okay, yeah. and and, Got I, me here. and I I can see that you definitely draw a lot of inspiration, and that you definitely have a vision ahead. And uh, is there a certain routine you have every single day when it comes to this? Um, I mean, I wake up at at like five six a.m. and I just and uh, I'm I'm always talking to new people. It just gets me excited, and. Uh, yeah, and that's that's just how it is. I mean, that's just how I am. That's great. And yeah. one last thing I want to bring up. For you, you know, you had a aha moment. Like you said, you were driving in your car. You used to have tints on your window, and you came up with this concept. Now, you obviously told a story, which is a really great way of selling your product. But for those people who just came up with a, you know, a product, don't necessarily have a story. Do you have any tips for them? I think, you know, telling a story is super important in selling your product. But for those who don't, do you have any tips for them? Uh, I mean, the thing, you know, as long as you're, you're solving a prop, you know, a problem, um, I think you, even if you don't have a story, you know, you just have to empathize with the people. So they know, like when I'm selling my product, I'm, I'm telling the people, Hey, you know what? I know everybody cannot go out there and they cannot afford paying $300 for to get the tents, right? So I would tell them, hey, I want everybody to have this thing, you know, because the car, you know, so I think for any person, the car, you know, their house, their cars, they're very important. They're very personal, you know, so everybody wants, wants them to look great. So if you can connect with them at some level, I think I think it just makes them feel comfortable and then, you know, if you have the product, I'm pretty sure you know they'll, you know they'll back you. They'll they'll be like, yeah, this is this is something good. Because eventually, when people people you know when you connect with people and you tell them, hey, you know what, this is what I created because I want to solve this problem and I'm just passionate about it. They're actually they're actually, you know, you're actually selling yourself more than the product because they see the passion behind it. You know, they see that this guy is working on something he's passionate about and, you know, he wants to make it work. So I think, I think people will, they'll just respond well. Nice. Okay. That's great. Well, we thank you so much for your time. We want to know if you have any closing thoughts and, uh, uh 
ahead, go ahead. Mm, I, 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 the same thing that I said before, you know, I was, I was like listening to um, um, this guy. Um, uh, I forgot his, forgot his name. Um, he's on Shark Tank. Uh, he's on Shark Tank, and he owns uh, Dallas Mavericks. Oh, Cuban, Mark, Mark Cuban. Cuban uh-huh. Mark Cuban. So he, what he's, you know, he said he used to, uh, you know, he was um, one time I was listening to him, and he said that the guy who, you know, who owns Uber or who create who started Uber, Travis. he came to him, he came to him, right? And he said, he, he came to him before he went to anybody else. And he said, he told him that it's not going to work. And, you know, he said that he made him look like a fool. So I, I, I mean, so basically I'll just say, believe in your idea, you know, believe in yourself. The most important thing is the belief that you have, you know, because when, you know, when you're going out there, you're working, the most important thing is that you believe in yourself because if I'm going out there, you know, and I think that, you know, I'm thinking that I'm going to fail or I'm scared of failing, there are, chances are I'm going to fail. But if I'm thinking that, hey, I'm not going to fail and I'm positive, I'm not going to fail. That's the only difference between a successful person and an unsuccessful person. That's just a, you know, their, their, their positivity or their confidence or their belief that, you know, if, if you believe in yourself and you think that you can do it, eventually you'll get there. Mm-hmm. Ain't that the truth? If you believe in yourself, you will get there. But yeah, what- I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, know, what, sometimes, you know, you, you watch all these sports and, you know, I'm, I'm actually myself a sportsman. I play a lot of sports. So the day when you're not feeling so good and you're like, you start thinking, hey, I'm going to go play, go out there and, you know, let's say I'm a, I'm a pitcher, or I'm a hitter. I'm like, okay, what if I don't do well? Okay, now... Whenever you start thinking that, okay, what if I don't do well? Chances are you're not going to do well. But whenever you go out there and you're like, okay, what happens if I, if I, if I win? Chances are you're going to, you're going to win. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's great insight. Well, we thank you so much for your time. If you want to let everyone know where they can check out your product. Um, yeah, it's uh, our website is quicksnap.us uh, without a C, Q-U-I-K-S-N-A-P.us. Uh, quicksnap was taken. So I went without a C. And uh, if you want to check it out on Kickstarter, you can always type quick snap Kickstarter. And uh, yeah, you can check us out. Perfect. Thank you so much again for your time. We look forward to version two of this. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. you. Have Have a good day. Great speaking with you. You too. Same here. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Gadget Flow podcast. Make sure to subscribe on iTunes for more episodes. And check out our website at thegadgetflow.com. Dot com. O.com. O.com.